previous video you had learned how to create a marker and create multiple markers how to remove them and in this video you're going to learn how to create a search box a search field where you can put an address and you know you can uh, get the value of that etc okay so let's begin then um, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll go back to our JavaScript file and, and you know we had created this uh, map options variable and we had used this um, map variable set its value to google.maps.map and it created the map then we had created a marker etc and now what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, start over here so i pasted some set of code starting from here okay so the first thing we need to do is create a search box so we'll create a variable called search box and i think let's define it over here rather than because we need to define all the variables at the top that's the best practice okay so that's search box I think that's the name yeah that's the name okay so we'll say search box is equal to new google dot maps dot places dot search box and then it takes the parameter as um, uh, the uh, place where you want to have the search box so remember in the index.php we had created an input field with the ID of map search and that's the element ID that we need to pass over here okay that's a map search uh, so in fact we can just use the address eel over here rather than going ahead and passing it like that okay cool all right uh, now if you do a console Google which is an object of the Google API if you do like a refresh or something okay uh, just ignore all of this for now okay so if you check in Google uh, Google is returning this object and Google dot maps is going to give me access to this object and inside of this I should be able to get the places property okay so if you search for it you will see it isn't there Okay, so how do we so how do we go ahead and access that in order for us to create a search box we need to have the places okay so do that if you go on to uh, your link JavaScript places okay which is there if you scroll down get uh, below get started and go to libraries and you can see places libraries okay so this is the library that we need to import in order for us to access that particular property of Google Maps uh, so which is why if you remember in the index.php in the script tag in the link uh, we had along with the callback um, you know value we had also put this value library is equal to places okay so because you want this library in order for us to access uh, this particular um, property and its method okay so now we'll have the places available and we're going to access the search box method of that search box method is going to go ahead and create the search box and um, it's going to go ahead and um, uh, take the uh, element where we want uh, to create the search box so let's comment this set of code we don't need that right now okay now if we go over here refresh the page and uh, now you will notice that if you type something you will see that you are getting the list of the matched items yep but nothing works over here so if you click on it nothing would work you know it's not going to take the marker uh, to any particular this particular location in order for us to do that we need to do something else which is this <clears throat> first let's get rid of this marker too because this is disturbing us we don't need the second marker we just need one okay so we have got google.maps.event add list now you must be wondering that idly uh, the way to go ahead and use an event is add event listener or in JavaScript uh, but how come it is event.add listener so event.add listener uh, is basically a property uh, is a method of uh, a custom event of the Google Maps API okay so um, if you go on to events okay so let me go ahead and increase its font size so you can see what we're talking about okay each maps uh, JavaScript API object imports uh, sorry exports a number of named events programs interested in certain events will register JavaScript event listeners for those events and execute code 
when those events are received by calling add listener. So add listener is basically a method defined by the Google JavaScript API to register events handlers on the object. Whenever an object's property changes, the Google Maps JavaScript API will fire an event uh, that property has changed. For example, an API will fire a zoom changed event on the map when the map zoom level changes. You can intercept these changes by calling the add listener method uh, to register event handlers object as well. So these are certain uh, you know events that are predefined in the library. So if you click on this link, it'll take you over here. So you know these are the uh, methods that you can use for the event listener. Uh, sorry, this is for the map. Sorry, ignore this, please. Uh, I think it's over here somewhere. Event. Okay, here it is. Events. Okay, so as you can see that this is the map and if you move it, you can see all of these are events are taken like a drag end event when you're dragging it, you know, then you have the bounce change, center changed, mouse over, tilts, loaded and things like that. So these are a different set of events that the uh, JavaScript map, Google Maps API has got it predefined. Okay, so you can use all of this. Okay, and the way to access that is uh, dot uh, add listener. Okay, so what we really want to do is that whenever the user goes ahead and um, types an address over here, uh, I should be able to, you know, uh, place the marker at that location. Okay, so the event basically is called places changed. Okay, because currently the marker is at this location. When we type something over here, then the event of the places changed will get fired. And if you want to see that, um, Let's console this. And don't worry about the, this bit of code for now, but we are just inside of this. Okay, so basically the add listener takes uh, different parameters, like it takes the um, the element uh, where the search is being made, then it takes the event name, and then it takes the callback function. Okay. So let's console something. Uh, console like test. Refresh. Console. Let's get rid of this. If I type something over here and if I select that, you can see the test, which means the moment. You put an address over here and select the address, choose the address, this event gets fired. Okay, cool. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a variable called places and we'll say search box dot get places. So what is search box? Search box is an object returned by, uh, you know, this particular, uh, you know, method that we've used to create a search box. And, we'll, and search box has got a... Uh, a method called get places okay so if you console dot log search box dot get places uh, if you refresh it change the name you know what we'll get rid of this Google console it's disturbing us for now okay I'll type something over here and this is what we got over here okay so so if you do a search uh, box dot get places so you can see that this is the object that you've got right okay uh, and uh, then we need to create a variable called bounds and then we're going to get the uh, object using google dot maps dot lat lang bounds okay uh, and uh, if you get the zeroth element of this places, so places zeroth element, which is this one. Okay, so this is basically got everything. You've got the address component. It's got the you know long name Punjabi Pura, Brampuri, and Uttar Pradesh, India, and all of that. So later on, you know, if you want to use this in your project, uh, that you want uh, to understand where is the user, uh, you know. Uh, 
clicked this where is the user selected this particular marker uh, you can get the value by you know doing places and then uh, zeroth element and then dot uh, address component component then dot zero so for example if you wanted the delhi then the first element and then the long name so you can access all of these properties and get that value depending on you know what user is selected over here and you can use that in your project for example store that value in a database so if user has given this address you can use that to store that in a database for multiple users okay so we've got that uh, let's also get the information of what do we have in this bound okay so you've got uh, information of what is there in this places what do we get it returns so it returns this zeroth element and then inside of that you have got the entire address okay and now we'll understand what do we get inside of this bounds so let's check that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this get rid of this as well and get rid of this all of the console I don't want them I don't want to confuse with these okay cool all right so let's type something So you can see this bound actually gives me the location, I think. I think it gives me the latitude and the longitude, yeah? Okay, so it's giving me the latitude and the longitude. Don't worry about this, where this is coming from. I'll explain that to you in a bit. But uh, the bound is actually giving me the latitude and the longitude values, okay? All right, so that means I've got the address, I've got the latitude and longitude value, and I think that's what I needed. So what we need to do is... Um, we need to get these values you know uh, so how do we do it so what we'll do is we'll run a for loop where i is equal to zero and then we'll say place which is an empty variable that we've created is equal to places i and then we'll say i plus plus okay so this loop is going to run and every time um, you know this loop increases so the first time is going to get me the first value of this place is zero and it's going to assign this to place second time the the place will be equal to places one third time will place is equal to play will be equal to places two okay and so on and so forth until this array finishes okay so then we'll say bounds dot extend place dot geometry dot location and then we'll say marker set position place dot geometry dot location these are basically the methods of the objects that we have just created okay and um, what this is going to do is going to set the position of marker to the location where the user has entered so this basically uh, this place is going to give me the uh, you know the latin long values and we are going to use this method set position of the marker so markers method set position and we're going to pass this location place.geometry.location so this is the value of latitude and longitude that the user has entered okay and it's going to automatically you know move the marker to that location so if you notice if i change it to like new york you can see automatically the marker is taken to that position and what is responsible to take the marker to that location is basically this marker dot set position okay cool now the next thing is uh, map dot fit bounds uh, then you pass the bounds so it fits to the bound and then map set zoom 18 so this is the set zoom property of the map object which sets the zoom to 18 if you change this zoom to 10 which means that uh, whenever the user enters something over here <coughs> It's only going to zoom till 10 uh, when the marker is, you know, change that location. If you take it to like 15 and the user enters something, it will take it to 15. Okay, cool. Now, uh, what we also need is the lat and long positions, which is this basically. <clears throat> so what we're going to do over here, we're going to say lat is equal to marker dot get position so get position is a method of the marker and dot lat lat is also a method this is going to give me the lat latitude position 
okay and this is going to give me the longitude position i'm storing that in a variable that i've created a uh, lat and long on top uh, somewhere here let's check where it is mm. in fact i have not created i think okay i'm not created it's, let's create one let and long okay so this variable equal to this so this will have the latitude value this will have the longitude value and we'll use the javascript property dot value so we had this element lat element which is basically go going to give me the element of latitude which is this input field this one and longitude will be stored inside of the long element okay and then we're going to set these values to the the values that we've got okay so on this when this event fires which means when the user goes ahead, ahead and enters anything over here uh, let's say mumbai and selects this the events the event which is uh, places change gets fired it takes the search box uh, object and inside of that it gets the get places uh, you know uh, object okay and basically this contains the um, the location information which is the la I think longitude and latitude okay and then we also have bounds uh, which is going to go ahead and uh, help me set the position of the marker okay to that particular location which user has entered over here <clears throat> okay and then uh, we'll go ahead and use the fit bound to fit the bound so fit the bounds okay and then we'll use the set zoom to uh, you know decide how much zoom should it be when the user searches that address and then we'll get the values of the latitude and longitude using the get position latin long and then we're going to set these values, uh, the input values automatically to these positions. Okay, cool. Perfect. So I hope this video was helpful. And in the next video, we are going to... Okay, before we go to the next video, one more thing. How to remove an event listener. So to remove the event listener, we'll say variable and the name of the uh, variable. And then marker.addListener. For example, this is how you've set it. To remove it, we'll say google.maps.event remove listener and the name of the variable. Okay, so let's say that over here, uh, you know, we have created this event. We'll hold this in a variable and then pass that variable name over here in the remove event listener. <coughs> okay. All right. So, So we've learned how to create the uh, search box for the map and how to move the marker and set its position in that location. Now what we're going to do is, in the next video, we'll learn that when the user moves the marker to a different location, I want that location. So how do we do that? Okay, I not only want that location, but I want that location to be displayed over here in this input field. So we're going to learn that. That's very exciting. That's, so let's, let's learn that in the next video. Take care.